This is the Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Paul, meanwhile, has travelled to Coventry, the UK's motor city. He's come to the city's transport museum to find out about Coventry's pivotal role in the story of another form of transport, the humble bicycle. Here to show him round is curator Megan Nass. Hello, Megan. Yes, Paul. Nice to meet you. Lake White. The first bicycle seen here was the hobby horse, invented in Germany around 1817. But it's this French velocipede or bone shaker from 1868 that kick-started Coventry's cycle industry. Rowley B. Turner, who was one of the cycle pioneers in Coventry, he was living and working in Paris, and he noticed the locals riding around on these machines called velocipedes, and he just thought, that's, that's a great thing. And so he brought one back from Paris to Coventry to his uncle's soy machine factory. So it was Rowley B. Turner that persuaded his uncle and James Starley to start uh, producing these velocipedes. From Coventry, James Starley and his co-partner, Josiah Turner made the uncomfortable velocipede practical and sellable. But Starley realized that to increase speed, the front pedals needed to power a larger wheel. So in 1871, the first penny farthing called the Ariel was made in Coventry. So Megan, how is this an improvement on the velocipede? We have the addition of wire spokes as opposed to the wooden, wooden spokes. We also noticed that it was probably a little bit more of a smoother ride with the solid rubber tires. And then also um, the addition of the braking system on the back there. These look precarious. I imagine it's difficult to mount up. Yes, yeah. Difficult to stop. Mm -hmm. uh, just dangerous all round. Yeah, it, I think it would have been. And it would have really, the penny farthing would have really only suited athletic men. Hey, <laughs> we can make this happen. And here is a suited Absolutely. athletic man. My, what is that, a period specimen? Absolutely, this is 1885, and she was made here in Coventry by oh, the Singer Company. fantastic. So she's a fine example. Love so how difficult is it to get on one of those? I think the answer is very difficult, Paul, but Simon is going to give you a hand. Go ahead. Tell my two, kids, three. I love them, yeah. My wife as well. <laughs> There we go. Well, see, see? Assume the position. Yes, 40. absolutely. Very straight back. You look as if you were born to ride that, Paul. This is petrified. Seriously, it looks high up from down there. Oh, you're a long way up. up. here. Yeah. Uh, you look like ants, to be yeah. quite absolutely. frank. <laughs> but can Paul get off again? Penny farthings were notorious for toppling while stationary, so most people jumped off them while they were still moving. Rich. And I'm just going to... And then down off the bike. Well it, done. I felt I was better on the way down Very the Very good, <laughs> very good. <laughs> and this is how we would mount and get... Properly. It. OK, so... One, two, three. And off into the sunset. Just another day at the museum. <laughs> <laughs> So we have certainly done the penny farthing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But where do we go from here? We go to this next bike, the Rover Safety Bike, so called because it was safer than the iconic penny farthing. This humble looking bike would sell millions around the world, changing cycling forever and set the blueprint for all modern bicycles. All from a factory right here in Coventry. That is a bike as I know it. It is. John Kemp Starley, who is the nephew of James Starley, this was his 1888 version. That seems very modern for 1888. It does. John Starley came up with several new features that are still around today. Same sized wheels, a chain drive, and he added a recent invention, John Dunlop's pneumatic tyre. The journey from the hobby horse to the modern bicycle was complete, and by the mid 20th century, the bike was the most popular form of transport in the world, all thanks to the sewing machine pioneers of Coventry. And it wasn't long before those pioneers that made Coventry the world capital of bike making would also start Britain's car industry. Speaking of which, it's time for Paul to get back on the road. Look at that. I don't think you'll get Margie on the back of that, Paul. 